When did the Seventh-day Adventist Church change their religion from the pioneers' fundamental principles to the present fundamental beliefs, according to history? I am fascinated by the uh, discovery that the Lord has shown and had directed my mind. I was agitated why there are so many uh, Adventists online are questioning the doctrine of God and they are um, trying to uh, challenge the present church of the uh, Seventh-day Adventist because of its departure, the seeming departure from the faith, according to many that I have uh, heard and I have watched. And so my mind was agitated and I tried to, tried to search for myself because I'm also interested to understand what Sister Ellen G. White says about the omega of apostasy or the last day apostasy that will sweep away the pioneer foundations or the pure foundations, according to Ellen G. White as authorized by the Holy Spirit. It's a fascinating story. So I would like to recommend this uh, website that I found when I Google search, when did the Seventh-day Adventist Church change their religion from Trinitarian to non, uh, from non-Trinitarian to Trinitarian. So I would like to share this uh, revelation to you and it is a joy for me to urge you to study and to share if this is the truth, that we will not be deceived. And the next question in my mind as I will address this, um, this topic is, among, is the Omega apostasy here present in our time? All right? But before that, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Guide our minds and our hearts to study and to understand your sacred word. Through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And so, friends, let us go to the timeline, step by step, according to as it reads with us.com. Again, you can search my material as it reads.com. I believe the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit, led me to, to um, uh, study and uh, uh, verify for my, for my own understanding and for my own um, curiosity if what the uh, uh, pioneers uh, had, believed, had uh, exposed or propagated is still the belief that the present Seventh-day Adventist preach and teach. All right. And so according to this um, uh, website, asitreads.com, this timeline is a step-by-step -step illustration of our early church pioneers, or old-timers, they call it, dying off and the effects of educated scholars inserting their academic influence in changing the direction of our church to what has become now from non-Trinitarian to a decidedly a Trinitarian denomination. It is ironic, friends, because most of those who, who adhered to the preaching and teaching of William Miller came from denominated uh, Protestant churches. Those who believe, many of them believe in the Trinitarian teachings. For example, Ellen G. White, Methodist, and the other, the Baptist, and and other are um, other denominations prevalent during the time in the uh, uh, northeastern uh, uh, United States of America. So, thinking that from Trinitarian to non-Trinitarian and back to Trinitarian doesn't not doesn't make any sense. Why would the pioneers or why would Ellen G. White change? or go back to the church that she left for the sake of the 1844 message. 
and so this is what we will study today. I'm sorry, I'm not um, a tech guy. I, I cannot flash this to you. I could just show this um, uh, website that I'm reading right now, how I wish I have some uh, uh, software skills that I could uh, master, but I'm used to just preaching and teaching, so bear with me today. I would like to give this explanation or timeline according to this website that I find very helpful and truthful because as a student of history in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and theology, it is my duty to share to you the truth that is uh, relevant to our eternal salvation. All right, let's go. 1860, the remnant sab Sabbath-keeping believers is given the name Seventh-day Adventist. Adventist, which carried heaven's approval according to this website. And I believe it was 1860, and the organization uh, was officially um, recognized uh, 1863. The uh, General Conference of the Seventh Day Adventist was formally um, organized on May 20, 1863. And there, in that website, there are the, uh, you can find, I mean, Transcript of minutes of the GC sessions from 1863 to 1888. Sounds exciting. So this these are truth field uh, uh, dates and the history. 1872, my friends. 1872. What happens? The Declaration of the Fundamental Principles as Thought and Practice of the Seventh Day Adventist, consisting of 20, 25 propositions largely written by James White, the husband of Ellen G. White, was published or is published as a pamphlet at the Battle Creek, Michigan. To, to be very brief, the 1872 Declaration of the Fundamental Principles Taught and Practiced by the Seventh-day Adventist includes the teaching of the scripture as the first and the second as the, true, the, the teaching of the the one true God, and the third is Jesus as the only begotten Son of God. There was no Trinity teaching in 1872. And this lays a clear non-Trinitarian foundation and is not replaced or changed in any way until 1931. So there you, there you have it, friends. Uh, 1872 was the official declaration of the fundamental principles, and I was um, I was under impression that this is not a test of uh, of, of, of faith. Uh, whereas today, the 28 fundamental beliefs, including the Trini Trinity teaching, is a test of or a requirement for church membership. So uh, maybe a test uh, instead of test of faith, I mean requirement for church membership. I stand corrected. And so this is 1872. So they have, they are firm. The, uh, James White, the husband, and Mrs. White, I believe they are in unity because of the readings from the writings of Mrs. White. She was clear in her um, stand with the 1872 Declaration of Fundamental Principles. 1872, it was also recorded the death of Elder Joseph Bates. Remember, he was a former sea captain who discovered and who um, accepted the, uh, he's one of the first Millerite uh, adherents to accept the Sabbath and shared it to uh, Sister White and, um, and the others. And so 1872, the death of Elder Joseph Bates. And then in 1874, the fundamental principles of 1872 are published again by James White in the first issue of the Science of the Times, June 4, 1874, and by Uriah Smith in the Advent Review and Herald of the Sabbath, November 24, 1874. So the proof is there. Um, they, they continue to believe in the one true God and that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, meaning to say, uh, he was he he was he was he was he proceeded from the substance of God, and he 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 they believe in the account of John chapter one that he was tore in the bosom or from the bosom of the Father, 
those people right now today who are saying that if Jesus has a beginning, he could not be God. It is a false premise because the pioneers believe in my reading. I'm just adding that they believe that Jesus was the only begotten son of God, the, the, the true um, the true son of God before he became the son of man. And he is from the same substance of God. And therefore, he is divine. And those who argue that if Jesus has a beginning, he's not divine. Friends, let me tell you from my own understanding, from my own um, grasp of the subject, it is not true. So the pioneers believe that Jesus, though he came from or was torn from the bosom of God, or he, he proceeded, he was begotten. The pioneers, including Alan G. White, believe that Jesus was divine. So uh, the present-day scholars, teachers, famous pastors are, are arguing against what the pioneers believe. So it is, uh, it is a matter of uh, obscuring the truth, of obfuscating what is already established by the pioneers. So 1877... Okay, let's go to 1877. The Biblical Institute where Uriah Smith and James White outlined the principal doctrines of Seventh-day Adventists is held in Oakland, California, covering everything from the sanctuary to uh, prophecy, the nature of sin to the nature of Christ. This institute confirms and strengthens the teachings of Adventism as outlined in the fundamentals of 1872. And in 1881, friends, 1881, I don't know if you can see what I'm trying to read here. 1881, it was the death of Elder James White. 1883, it is the death of Elder J.B. Prisby and Elder John Nevins Andrew. It's ironic, very ironic, that John Nevin Andrews, who don't believe Trinity, rejects Trinity, his name now bears the institution that propagates Trinity. That's the most uh, ironic turnaround of, of my discovery. I don't know if you had the, uh, discovered that. John Nevin Andrews, the Andrews University that bears his name. He was a non-Trinitarian proponent, but the institution, the school of theology, the seminary is teaching Trinitarian, meaning to say... It is implied that John Nevin Andrews was wrong, but that is far from the truth. So he died, uh, John Nevin Andrews and Elder J.B. Prisby died in 1883. So in 1883 as well, the Jell Conference session it is decided against publishing church manual as it is deemed undesirable to take any steps toward the discipline, creed, or form or formalism. Review and Herald, November 27, 1883. So they rejected the church manual, meaning to say the, the, the governing body of uh, the authority. They reject, the pioneers rejected. They were wise to reject because this has now become the centralized. Uh, uh, if, if, if ever the church manual was approved, it could have been much earlier Um earlier uh, centralization and the control not only of the resources but the doctrine or the faith so remember that the pioneers were protecting the the non-trinitarian view of the doctrine of god and that their experience and that their understanding of the century in the 1844 the the investigative judgment was clear at this time that's why they 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 publish and they strengthen it and around this time. So I could imagine at that early stage, um, America, just after the, uh, the, the, the Civil War, the death of Abraham Lincoln after uh, 20 years, our pioneers were, were establishing the church and they rejected the, uh, the church manual. To me, that was... A divine uh, initiated move. Why they they did that during the time? Because they, uh, to me, I, I observe that God is strengthening the foundation because God foresee the apostasy. Well, let's continue. 1888, the famous, the famous 1888, which is misunderstood and taught by famous uh, pastors and theologians in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. They misunderstand the context 
and the proponents of uh, of 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 these uh, of the righteousness by faith. And uh, Mrs. White was clear. Um, I have no time now to to discuss this, but the famous 1888, the 27th General Conference session is held at Minneapolis, Minnesota with 91 delegates and approximately 475 attendees. God brings the truth of justification by faith to his people through elder elders Wagoneer and Jones. Built in a powerful biblical foundation, this message of the love of God marks the beginning of the loud cry. This message of the love of God marks the beginning of the loud cry. But sadly, the message is resisted by a large majority of the church leadership. Ellen White writes, the prejudices and opinions that prevailed at Minneapolis are not dead by any means. The seeds they're sown are ready to spring to life and bear um, and bear a like harvest because the roots are still left, ellipsis, and will bear their unholy fruit to poison the perception and blind the understanding of those you connect with in regard to the messengers and messages that God sends. Manuscripts, fort manuscript, 40, 1890, 1888 materials, chapter 115. So that's 1888, the dramatic... Uh, often quote by those who propose, uh, you know, those who teach the justification by faith and the controversy that is brewing in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. They are just less than 500. They were, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it says here there were 91 delegates and appro approximately 475. They were not a lot, but they were trying to um, lay the foundations. 1889, the fundamental principles are expanded to 28 sections and published in the 1889 yearbook, leaving the first two in the doctrine of God unchanged. The doctrine of the one true God and Jesus as the only begotten Son of God. It remains unchanged during its reprinting from 1905-1914 in the Seventh-day Adventist yearbook. 1889, the death of Elder Joseph Harvey Wagner, Elder Joseph Wig, uh, Wagner's father. In 1889, the famous D. M. Dudley Marvin Conright, if I'm not mistaken, D. M. Conright, a prominent leader in Adventism, who left the church in 1887, published a book, Seventh Day Adventism Renounced. In the book on page 25, he levels against his former brethren, this stating they reject the doctrine of the Trinity. So D. M. Conright was. I, I believe he, he accepted the Trinitarian and he could not accept the pioneer's position on the non-Trinitarian. So he left and he renounced. And he is widely used by uh, future scholars who accuse the Seventh-day Adventist Church cult. His writing forms the basis of the accusation of Walter Reed and Barnhouse and many others against Ellen G. White and against the pioneers because of their non-Trinitarian uh, view of the doctrine of God. 1890, the leadership attempts to remove the name Seventh-day Adventist from the American Sentinel Religious Liberty Journal of this SDA church to make the magazine popular with other denominations. So there was this attempt on the 1890, the first decade before the turn of the century or the last decade before the turn of the century. So you could just imagine the struggle in this small group of people, the Seventh-day Adventists, the non-Trinitarians, and the inroads of those who would like the denomination to be accepted. So you've got a clue right now why this is happening. But this step is averted because a living prophet is present. Ellen White states this policy is the first steps in a succession of wrong steps. So Mrs. White asserted, um, asserted that if if we if we wanted to be more more acceptable and popular like the other denomination, that is a wrong step. So Mrs. White in 1890 was putting the brakes on trying to conform to the image of the Protestant uh, Protestant world, the evangelicals. 1891, the General Conference sends Ellen G. White far away to Australia, contrary to the light given her. A.G. Wagner is sent to England as editor of the present truth, 10 years to separate him from A.P. Jones and Ellen G. White. I visited the house uh, of Ellen G. White in Corumbong, if I'm not mistaken, Australia. And um, it's, it's a rich history. 
And there is this disconnect between the uh, Gel Conference leadership uh, who wanted to be accepted by the evangelicals and the uh, Protestant church and perhaps the Roman Catholic church during this time, 1890s, 1891. And so that was a struggle. You could see 1892, 1892, 1892, death of Elder Roswell F. Cottrell. I, I came to... Um, to some of the readings of uh, uh, of this guy, uh, of this uh, pioneer, I mean, 1892 Bible Students Library Lessons of the Public, the Bible Doctrine of the Trinity, reprint of article in New York Independent on November 14. Author Samuel Spear, non SDA, promotes one God subsisting and acting in three hypothesis or hypo hypostasis, I mean, uh, persons, but also in eternal divine subordination of the Son. Of the Father, the track used terms not generally used by Adventists, but it is generally non Trinitarian in content. 1894, Ellen White warns it is a grave mistake on the part of those who are children, who are children of God to seek a bridge that gulf, the gulf that separates them from the children of darkness by yielding principle, by compromising truth. Now we are talking here. Now we are. We are seeing the uh, the uh, maneuver of the devil because there is a force that Ellen G. White is trying to hold that uh, these forces within the leadership of the church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in 1894, they would like to bridge the gulf between the apostate Protestantism and the Roman Catholic Church and the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So please bear that in mind. Uh, Miss Sister, Sister White um, resisted this uh, this uh, uh, bridging. He's not uh, she's not anti people. I believe she is trying to protect the the foundational truth uh, of of the church. 1894. Herbert Camden Herbert Camden Lacey attends Sunday Keeping Trinitarian Meeting as a Battle Creek College Delegate to Student Volunteer Movement for Foreign Missions in Michigan. Lacey reaccepts the Trinity Doctrine. So um, when Herbert Camden, Camden Lacey, or La Lacey, forgive me, pronunciation, second language, Lacey attends Sunday Keeping Trinitarian Meeting at Battle Creek College Delegate to Student Volunteer Movement. And then he accepted the Trinity Doctrine. 1895, Ellen White warns the leadership in Battle Creek. The Lord has not placed any one of his human agencies under the dictation and control of those who are themselves, but earring mortals. Take note of this. But there is a power exercise in Battle Creek that God has not given, and he will judge those who assume this authority Brethren, leave God to rule. Wow, this is uh, indeed fascinating to, um, to understand. 1896, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the struggle, or 1895, I mean. All right, let's go to 18, bear with me here, 96. Recommendations for essential change at general conference session to choose one man as president, but the brethren advise that it is not wise to do so. Ellen G. White warns to place man where God should be placed does not honor or glorify God. Is the president of the general conference to be the God of the people? Friends, it reminds me of the Old Testament clamor of God's people, the Israelites, to have their own king, just like the, the other countries or other nations. And that has started the, the, the downfall. They, they lost their, their identity to, to trust in the wisdom of God by appointing judges amongst them and, and not to be manipulated by one-man rule like the papacy. So this is the struggle in 1896. 1897, John Harvey Kellogg presents his first concept leading to pantheism, a series of studies he gives at the general conference session. 1898, the Review and Herald prints an article from the King's Messenger, which is Trinitarian in teaching, the good man. 1898, R.E. Underwood's view of the Holy Spirit changes from an influence to a person, thus becoming a Trinitarian. 
1898, Ellen White states, the church is in the Laodicean state. The presence of God is not in her midst. Wow. 1900s, the turn of the century. The Review and Herald prints two more articles from the King's Messenger, both of which are Trinitarian teaching, the third person, and blended personalities. The Ameri 1901, the American Standard Version of the Bible is first published. This move towards a common Bible between Catholics and Protestants will, will influence Adventism in small steps away from truth. 1901, rec recommendations for change are repeated and voted. One chairman is to head the General Conference for only one year. Arthur Daniels is elected, but two years later, he is still president. General Conference Executive Committee increases its number from 13 to 25. Ellen White warns that the church is working upon the wrong principles. The people have lost confidence in those who have the management of the work, yet we hear that the voice of the conference, the voice of God, every time I heard this, I have thought it was almost blasphemy. Wow! Reminds us of Saul and the Israelites. One man rule departs from the truth. Wow. 1902, J.H. Kellogg prepares to publish his work, The Living Temple. Includes new theories. Ignores the counsel of Sister White. As a result, the Battle Creek Sanitarium, headed by Kellogg and Review and Herald Printing Office, burned to the ground. 1902, and with the Gallic proofs of Kellogg's book, but he takes the manuscript to a non-Adventist printer, 23 fires, 23 fires would happen between 1901 and 1923, judgment has ruled from the heavens above. Kellogg was brilliant in his own pride and intellectual because he was a physician, but the devil spoke to him, and he and, and the judgment of God was, you know, was, was there because of his uh, um, heresy and philosophical ideas, pantheism, which later on he connected to tr Trinity. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just going ahead of myself because I'm excited to let you know how this um, change happened. 1903, crisis begins with the living, living temple. The Alpha, the first heresy. Kellogg prints the book in which he places theories. Ellen White says there there are spiritualistic and akin to pantheism. Special testimonies B number six, page 41. She says these teachings are the alpha of deadly heresies and that the omega would follow in a little while. I tremble for our people in the living temple. The assertion is made that God is in the flower, in the leaf, in the sinner, but God does not live in the sinner. The word declares that he abides only in the hearts of those who love him and do righteousness. God does not abide in the heart of the sinner. It is the enemy who abides their sermons and talks. In volume 1, page 341. But Caleb claims that his book is in harmony with Alan G. White's writings and can be sustained by statements from the testimony. What a lie. What a manipulation. Ellen White tells him he has taken her statements away from their connection and interpreted them according to his own. Mine. I saw what was coming in, and I saw that our brethren were blind. They didn't realize the danger. 1903. In vision, LNG White sees a platform braced by solid timbers, the truths of the word of God. Someone high in responsibility in the medical work was directing this man, that man, to loosen the timber supporting this platform. It means to say that LNG White saw the dream representing Kellogg, who is trying to destroy the platform from uh, non-Trinitarian to Trinitarian by virtue of his um, sp spiritualistic interpretation of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, a third person according to him. So 1903, the Autumn Council, the understanding of the character and personality comes under threat. A.G. Daniels is concerned that the supporters of Living Temple would cause a confrontation and there is not call for a vote. Ellen White writes to him, be careful how you sustain the sentiments of this book regarding the personality of God. It has been represented to me that the writer of this book, that's Kellogg, is on a false track. So 1903, Ellen G. White put out a letter, 253, which is uh, available online, warning that, Ellen, uh, that Kellogg is on their false track. Ellen G. White here, 
clearly writes to Caleb, you are not definitely clear in the personality of God, which is everything to us as people. You have virtually destroyed the Lord God himself. Wow. She further predicts that what, what will happen in the future, the enemy of souls has sought to bring in the supposition that the great reformation was to take place among Seventh-day Adventists and that this reformation would consist in giving up the doctrines which stands the filler, pillars of our faith and engaging in a process of reorganization. Wow. Wow. Were this reformation to take place, what would result? The principles of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church would be discarded. Our religion would be changed. The fundamental principles that had sustained the work for the last 50 years from 1844 until that time, for the last 50 years would be accounted as error. Sister White predicted this. A new organization would be established. Books of new order would be written. A system intellectual philosophy would be introduced. Wow. Bull's eye to our day. Wow, that's why I'm so I'm so blown away that God indeed spoke to Ellen G. White that in the future the church would depart from the God ordained principle, the truth that sustained the work from 1844 until the time Ellen G. White died. Let's continue reading. All right, I will just leave it to you to search um, the uh, the sources on your uh, on the description box. 1903, William, um, Uriah Smith dies. 1903, Doctor Harvey Kellogg promotes Trinitarian doctrines. Wow! In Battle Creek, after converting from pantheism, he is trying to patch his uh, faulty uh, spiritualistic, spiritualistic understanding of who God is with. Trinity. He uses God, the Holy Spirit. This is why it said, I tremble for the Omega. I tremble for the people. Wow, 1903, this is happening. 1904, Ellen G. White has a vision which an angel says to Jones and Wagner, the sentiments that you have received in harmony with special theories for some book, Living Temple, are not pure truth. There is commingling of truth and error separately entirely from the bewitching Misleading sentiments that run through living temple. Letter 279, 1904. 1904, Ellen White has another vision of Caleb. The subject upon which he was speaking was life in the relationship of God to all living things. In his presentations, he clothed the matter somewhat, but in reality, he was presenting as of the highest value scientific theories which are akin to fantheism. I was astonished to see... With, with what enthusiasm the sophistries and deceptive theories were received. The influence of this talk gave the speaker encouragement to call for a council of our brethren at Battle Creek for a further examination of this seducing sentiment. Special testimony, series B, number six, page 10. Rebellion and apostasy are in the very air we breathe. Wow, 1904. Whew, that was tough. There's a lot more, but I'll just... 1905, the 20 fundamental principles of 19, uh, 80, uh, 1888 synopsis of our, is inserted again. The church yearbook continues until 1914. 1905, Daniel Burdu dies. 1905, Ellen White says the writing of the fire here should be reproduced. 1907, apostasy is here. With the apostasy of John Harvey Kellogg, Ellen White warns the time of apostasy is here. Every conceivable effort will be made to throw doubt upon the positions that have occupied for over half a century. 1907. Mrs. White is giving the warning. The apostasy was here. 1910, Bible Training School Booklet, December issue was published using the term Trinity. Before the death, five years before the death of Mrs. White. So there was this, there was this struggle. Mrs. White was trying to resist until 1912. The Review and Herald reprints the original principles with the first two unchanged one God and one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son. August 22, 1912. 1913, F.M. Wilcox publishes a, a supposed Trinitarian tract and quote from Ellen White taken 
from desire of ages next to it from 1890 to paint a false picture of the belief in the review and herald volume 6 uh, october 9 1913 i'm very familiar with this because even my professor when i was in the seminary the master's level he used lng white to support the trinitarian i was i i was under the impression for a long time that sister white changed her view back from uh, Methodist Trinitarian to Adventist non-Trinitarian back to Trinitarian, but I was wrong. And I later on found out that Mrs. White was consistent in rejecting the Trinitarian doctrine. And the scholars were using her writings to promote that she is accepting the Trinity. What a deception, friends. What I'm just upset. I, I think these people are sincere, perhaps, but they 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 could not read correctly what Sister White was trying to say, or they, they, they are blinded by the devil. I don't know. But even me, for, for the most part of my life, I thought that Mrs. White changed her position from non trinitarian back to her original Methodist trinitarian view, but I was wrong. Mrs. White never changed her view about the non trinitarian or she, she stood firmly on the 1872 fundamental principles. Okay, so you now you can see, 1915, Ellen White warns of great changes to take place after her death. 1915, Ellen G. White dies. 1915, the synopsis of our faith, which is the fundamental principles, mostly written by James White and inserted in the 1889 yearbook. And again, the 1905-19 yearbooks are now removed. Wow, from the 1915 SDA yearbook by a mere young conference statistician. Edson Rogers. He obviously did it as soon as the living prophet has died. This nobody was used by the devil to, to manipulate and obscure the true faith of our pioneers. Thus, the fund fundamental principles held in great unanimity by the pioneers are put out of the way. 1916, Elder G. Wagoner and Dr. David Paulson died, death of Elder 1918, death of George Butler, James H. Morrison, Elder Little John. 1919, the Bible and Teachers Conference takes place in secrecy with the discussion becoming heated at times as in some leadership position test the waters to see if the doctor of the Trinity can be brought in. Wow, shadowy conspiracy group. 1922, Judson Washburn wrote, writes an open letter to Daniel saying the 1919 Bible conference was the most terrible thing that ever happened in the history of the denomination. 1922, Elder Stephen Haskell, author of many best-selling books, and Adventist pioneer, dies. 1923, Elder Alonzo Trevor Jones and Elder O.A. Johnson died. 1924, John Norton Loughborough, the last of the first generation core pioneers, die. 1926, Lefron <laughs> Leroy, who is the first associate secretary in and then made secretary of the General Conference session until now, is asked to present studies of the Holy Spirit at the Milwaukee General Conference session. In preparation for, for his studies, from went to books written by authors outside of our faith. He went to Babylon for his material to reference their writings as he could not find in our denomination writings that would line up with his agenda. Gradually, the meaning of the word divine changed until it meant not fully divine. We do not know how it changed, but Trinitarians were using the term deity instead of divine. Once divine and deity meant the same, when Frum uses the words, all the fullness of the Godhead, he is making two statements. An Arian or semi-Arian belief is not true Christianity, and the Trinity has a savior with full de de deity. Wow! Fascinating. As clearly warned by Alan G. White, Seventh-day Adventist people who are listening to my broadcast, please, I urge you, by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, through His Holy Spirit, listen to the change. 1926, general working policy adopted SDA church to become as part of evangelical churches. Wow. 1928, the elder death of Elder James Edson White, the son of James and Ellen G. White. 1921, Lefrom Leroy, Leroy is invited to present a series of studies of the Holy Spirit at the North American Union Ministerial Institute, blah, blah, blah. 1920, 
Leroy Fromm, founder of magazine, Ministry Magazine, begins promoting the American Standard Version of the Bible and demotes King James Bible to not a curate and old-fashioned status. He tours the U.S. promoting the Sunday Trinity to Adventist minister in Wright's book, The Coming of the Comforter. 1928, The Coming of the Comfort, uh, Comforter, the pro-Trinity book by Leroy Fromm, is published upon urgent upon request of hundreds of ministers who heard him speak in the book. He emphasized this strongly. He, the personality of the Holy Spirit is separate from the Father and Son. The book contains many quotations from the Spirit of Prophecy. But the interpretation is totally different from the teachings of the pioneers. 1928, W.W. Prescott, who was educated by the secular Darth Mon College, writes 11 articles in the Science of the Time documenting the Sunday scholars' proof of the inferiority of the King James Bible. 1928, John Conference adopts the American Revised Version Bible. Inspired by the Jesuits of Rome above the authorized King James Bible of the pioneers, this version comes from scholars that rely only on two manuscripts, the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus, Constantine's state Bible. This is the second wrong step towards ecumenism. This step is not possible with the passing of the last pioneer. The, the garbage manuscripts, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, not the majority text, the received text used by the reformers, the, the Protestant reformers, this was exalted by Le Fromme and the General Conference. 1929, healing of the deadly wound or the, of the papacy. 1921, A.T. Robinson writes an article, One God and One Mediator, that the one God is the Father only. 1930, General Conference vo votes to publish a church manual. There you go. In 1883, the General Conference had voted no. They have also decided it was time for a new statement of fundamental beliefs. Woo! They voted. The last of the pioneers has died and their vo voices are no longer heard. Leadership wants to change the old SDA doctrines. On the final atonement in heaven, the human nature of Christ, the place of scripture and prophecy in the church, the doctrine of the Trinity as taught by evangelical Ellen White warns. In no respect is God's work to be circumscribed by man-made restrictions. Many of the ambitious plans and policies that had made are not endorsed by him. Manuscript 245, Volume 1. 1930, our authorized Bible, vindicated by B.G. Wilkinson, is published, documenting the origins, history of the King James Bible. John Conference tries to discontinue the book, and Wilkinson writes a second book. In defense of his position, answers to objection to our authorized Bible vindicated. 1931, church leaders in Africa request a statement that will assist in better understanding of our work. 27 fundamental introduction in answer to the request, a suitable statement of faith is placed in the 1931 yearbook. 1931 yearbook with the new statements of belief was published. Beliefs is published without a vote or authority. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 1931, Wilcox published Review and Herald of Christ is Very God. We recognize the divine trinity. Wow. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. It's possessing a distinct, separate personality. 1932, the first church manual is published. 1935, death of Arthur Grevesner Daniels, one of the key men in apostasy. 1935, letter from H.W. Carr to Willie White. Ask about the nature of the Holy Spirit. It's being promoted by some of the leaders, being another separate person from the Father and the Son. Ellen White explaining that the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ is a divine personality begins to be twisted into someone else other than Christ, the comforter part of Willis. Willie White's response is the statements and the arguments of some of our ministers in their effort to prove that the Holy Spirit was individual as our God, the, the Father in Christ, the eternal Son, have perplexed me and sometimes they have made me sad. One popular teacher said we may regard him as the fellow who is down here running things. So this is the, the, the line of the apostasy that is uh, happening now. 1936, the General Conference Com Sabbath School Committee publishes a series of Sabbath School lesson studies about the uh, Trinity. Of course, 1936, Benjamin Wilkinson answers a letter from Dr. T. S. Sisters saying, replying to your letter, October 13, regarding the doctrine of the Trinity, I will say that the Seventh-day Advent, Seventh Advent do not and never have accepted the dark, mysterious Catholic doctrine of the Trinity. Wow, 1937, 
death of Willie C. White, the son of James. In 1939, W. Prescott Sermon, uh, I will not read this, all of this. Uh, 1941, General Conference uh, statement uh, votes the statement of beliefs be made available in leaflet form and officially re released as for our accepted statement of faith. And then they have approved a uniform baptismal covenant vow to in a certificate form based on the now accepted fundamental beliefs of 1931. The Trinitarian worded baptismal vow is formulated by 13 men led by Prescott. They call the Father the first person, Jesus the second person, the Holy Spirit is the third person. The word Trinity is not used. 1941-44, hymnal Christ in song and hymns in tune, song book copies are ordered back to the conferences for burning so that the new church hymnal with Trinitarian influence can replace them. This is under the guise of Roland Allen Anderson. 1943, John Harvey Kellogg dies after seducing many to his heresy. 1944, removal of committee of all 18 non-Trinitarian statements from Uriah Smith's book, Thoughts on Daniel and Revelation, in an attempt to cover up history. Wow. 1944, the truth triumphant by Benjamin G. Wilkinson is published an exhaustive study of the history of God's church in the wilderness. It contains strong statements against the Trinity doctrine. Leroy Fromm is angry and orders the destruction of the original opposite press place so the book cannot be reprinted. 1944, death of one, uh, William Warren Prescott, one of the key men in apostasy. 1945, Leroy publishes a compilation of Ellen G. White quotes in Mystery Magazine to give credence to the eternal Christ. Her understanding in, in this usage was far different than his. <laughs> 1946, leadership again calls for a committee of four to make a statement of official beliefs. However, it is again penned individually by F.M. Wilcox to a statement of beliefs on the Trin original Trinity, originally written in 1931 by him and unofficially put in his year. 1946, compilation of evangelism with careful Calculate the use of certain Alan G. White statements may not even complete sentences to make to paint a picture that she's supposedly Trinitarian. Was Trinitarian is done by cut and paste Leroy Lefrom, cut and paste the book Evangelism to show that Mrs. White was Trinitarian. Deception. 1946, the General Conference votes for the revision of the church manual. Um, 1947 and uh, 1946. Um, general conference after being conditioned for 27 years and a new generation of members coming to church during these 27 years they knew nothing but the Trinity votes to retain the 1931 baptism vow officially then they vote the changes to the baptismal vote, vow could only be made by the general conference delegates in a fresh official session 1948 um, 48 worldwide um, church of uh, world council of churches is formally instituted in Amsterdam. Um, 1949, Bible Readings for the Home is revised by D.A. Rebook in attempt to remove any non-Trinitarian or Aryan or semi-Aryan statements. Roy Allen Anderson had it, had his influence in this as well. Um, 1950, uh, her, death of Herbert Camden Lassie, one of the key men in apostasy. 1950, um, uh, Elders R.J. Whalen and Dickey Short write the thesis for the GC entitled 1888 Reexamined. This is eventually rejected in going discussions up until 1961. This is a form of cor correction for the church through self-examination and getting back to the truth. 1951, the church manual was published, endorsing Trinitarian sentiments for both the found fundamental beliefs in the baptismal vow. Wow. Wow. 1952. A book is uh, copyrighted principles of life and printed in 1956 it has been used by school children as the Bible doctrine study book. Uh, one paragraph says, well, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy are three separate and distinct beings, yet they are one in nature and character and purpose working in such close relationships as to be one. 1955 and 56 evangelical conferences take place in the general, con uh, general conference represented by Frome, Anderson and Reed. And Onroch. Daniel Donald Barnhouse writes in his Eternity, Eternity magazine immediately it was perceived that the Adventists were strenuously denying certain doctrinal positions which had been previously attributed to them. The Adventists specifically repudiated 
the teachings by ministers or members of their faith who have believed, proclaimed, and written any matter which would classify them among error. The non-Trinitarian truth has completely been uh, destroyed here. 1957, Questions on Doctrine. That's uh, another uh, fulfilled prophecy in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The uh, apostasy officially um, required. The church declares oneness with the fallen Protestant denomination in 1957. Uh, SDA joins the Christian World Communions. Uh, 1962, the Second Vatican Councils. Uh, 1962, the World Council of Churches incorporates the Trinity Doctrine in its prerequisite for membership, becomes the foremost ecumenical organization. Uh, 1962, Yearbook for Prince. 1965, uh, Beth Beverly Beach becomes the SDA ecumenical li liaison with other denomination. Um, 1968, World Council of Churches admits full memberships to the representatives from non-member churches, which includes the Seventh Day Adventist Church. 1968, 1971, Movement of Destiny by Le Leroy from gets published. From admits to alterations made from 1931 to standard wars to correct erroneous views of the Godhead to make them Trinitarian. Wow. He, he admitted he wrestled, he cut and pasted uh, Sister White's uh, statements to favor Trinitarian position. 1973, 1974, two days before my birthday, uh, Leroy from died. The key man in apostate, he was buried in a Freemason plot in Washington, D.C. 1974, I was born, 1974, just two days before, uh, two days after he died, I was born, I was innocent. Uh, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, my, my, my great-grandparents were Seventh-day Adventists, my grandparents were Seventh-day, my mother was a Seventh-day. And then 1975, a non-Trinitarian paper by Edward Edston is printed at the request of the Board of Walla Walla Academy in the book form called Human Spirit. Edstrom's belief in the Trinity has been challenged in 1954 when fellow pastors and workers in Central Africa were confronted by Muslims who claim one God, Allah, while Christianity to appeared to have three separate distinct gods that were called one. Neil Wilson the father of Ted Wilson, 1976, President of the North American Division, gives the sworn statement in the Silver Tubler legal case involving the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Although it is true that there was a period in the life of the Seventh-day Adventist Church when the denomination took a distinctly anti-Roman Catholic viewpoint and the term uh, hierarchy was used in the pejorative sense to refer to the papal form of church governments, that attitude in the church part was nothing more than a manifestation of a widespread anti-popery among conservative Protestant denominations in the early part of this century and the later part of the last and which is now has now been consigned to the historical trash <laughs> as trash heap as far as the Seventh-day Adventist Church is concerned. Ted Wilson's dad, Neil Wilson, just trash the great controversy. And that's why the book Great Hope, which happened under his watch, Ted Wilson's watch, if I'm not mistaken, published and distributed, is a watered-down version of the uh, anti-Pope uh, message of Ellen G. White. Sad. 1977, Pope Paul VI rewards Birth B. Beach, Seventh-day Adventist, first book with a private audience in, in the Vatican. Um, 1980, World General Conference in session, Dallas, Texas, officially votes to accept the Trinity Doctrine as part of 27 fundamental beliefs of the seventh day Adventists, April 23, 1980. I was only six years old. The baptismal vote was also. George Knight, professor in 1993, SDA theologian, makes this startling confession in History Magazine, October 1993. Most of the founders of the seventh day Adventism would not be able to join the church today if they have to subscribe to the denomination's fundamental beliefs. More specifically, most would not be able to agree to the belief number two, which deals with the doctrine of the Trinity. In all actuality, this would have included all of the founders 
and pioneers of the early SDA church, and it should be alarming to today's members. Look, George Knight, I met him. I, I listened to his uh, lectures. He was right. And I believe that indeed the apostasy is here and have swept away the church. 1995, the Vatican, the General Conference World Session in Utrecht, Netherlands, the Vatican flag is carried through the meeting hall in a singular fashion amidst an unusual loud ovation. Um, 1997, SDA logo is changed from the three angels to flames and cross, diminishing our distinctive identity as teachings of the three angels messages. In 1999, B.T. Rice, pastor of the St. Louis SDA Northside Church, addresses the Pope in the Vatican Mass held locally as Pope, your holiness, your historic visit. <laughs> your holiness. Wow. A Seventh-day Adventist. 2003, John Grass elected Secretary General of the Annual Conference of the Secretaries of the Christian World Communions, succeeding Birth B. Beach. Grass would hold his position until 2014. 2003 question of doctrine is republished by the Andrews University, pro-Trinitarian, pro-unfallen human nature of Christ. Baptismal vow, 19, 2005, is revised to the Trinity Creed to read, do you accept the teaching the Bible is expressed in the statements of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge, pledge to live your life by God's grace and harmony with his teachings? For the first time in Adventist history, the church is based its membership on a creed. Wow. 2008, uh, 2012, the White Estate database was hacked by Anonymous Park, SDA Anonymous. Yes. Woo! Their concern for public access to all LNG White's documents that they have been restricted in its public domain at this point as they should belong to the people. Man, I, I appreciate these guys who have skills. 2015, revision was made in the fundamental belief number 18 pertaining to the gift of prophecy. LNG White's authorities diminished the phrase phrases as the Lord's messenger, a continuing authoritative source, are removed. Arthur Steele would, later, Steele would later say, the suggested changes seek to avoid giving the impression that Ellen G. White and the Bible are equivalent sources of truth. Wow, Arthur. I think he's one of the vice presidents during the general conference session that I was there. I attended this general conference session. 2014, Gannon Jupe, <laughs> the, the popular friend of Pope Francis, Seventh-day Adventist, is elected the new Secretary General of the Annual Conference of the Secretaries of the Christian World Communions. 2015, LNG White Symposium is held at the Andrews University and spread worldwide, denies the spirit of prophecy's inspired authority to define doctrinal faith and practice, but only as theological and practical guidance and end time application. Wow. Andrews University, the Andrew, John Nevin Andrews, who supported Mrs. White, who rejects Trinitarian, uh, Trinitarian teaching, is now a Trinitarian proponent. I studied in Andrews for two years for my cohort of doctor of ministry. Sad. When I discovered this, sad, sad, sad. There you go, 2015. Now 2022. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is a new religion different from Ellen G. White's religion, the Pioneer's religion, and the early Seventh-day Adventists from the time 1844 until the death of Sister Ellen G. White and beyond. Many of those after the death of Mrs. White saw the apostasy had left. They formed historic Seventh-day Adventist home churches fellowship. Many of them had, uh, had seen, some of them stayed or many of them stayed. I, I don't exactly know the, the figures, but as the church grew, the apostasy was cemented. I was part of this church for the past 48 years of my life. Just two days after the death of the leading uh, man of apostasy, Leroy Fromm, I suspect he is a Freemason, double agent, Vatican mole in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. That's just my allegations. I have read and heard some testimony on YouTube, but I believe firmly he was. A Jesuit turncoat. I mean, he was a Seventh day Adventist, but he was a turncoat for the Jesuits. And he, along with the others, changed the faith 
uh, the Seventh Day Adventist from a non Trinitarian truth of the one true God, and that Jesus is the Son of the living God, and that Jesus is our example, that He came, disguised Himself as human being, as a human, disguised Himself as a human being, made for our for our for the sacrifice of sin he became a man he was the beloved son the begot the only begotten son of god lucifer made a warfare against the position of jesus christ and there we go friends so where am i i have families and friends and relatives in the seventh day Adventist church presently and it saddens me that I just knew this now. I was defending the church from those people who are trying to present this truth. And I found it by searching by the spirit of the living God, the Father. And so I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you today, friends, to think about these things. The Seventh Day Adventist Church today is not the faith that God had guided from 1844 until the death of Ellen G. White. But there are still people inside the church of the Seventh Day Adventist Church that God so long to call from darkness of apostasy to light. And I was among them. I was late. I'm a I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> I'm a late bloomer. But I'm I'm glad I found out the truth. So I'm returning to the roots. I accept the 1872 teachings of the early Seventh-day Adventists, the historic Seventh-day Adventists. And I would like to dedicate my life to share this truth to others. I abandon the Trinitarian position in the church. I denounce the corruption of the general conference, the divisions, the unions, and the conferences. I have, I have served the church for many years of my life. And because they treated me unfairly, these sentiments... It's not about them treating me unfairly. My sentiments today is about the truth that I found out. And I could connect that the reason why there are corrupt men and women in the church is because of apostasy. And so I could I forgive my leaders who have destroyed me and destroyed my career in the church. I forgive my friends and families who destroyed me and my career in the church. But I would like to uphold the truth of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, through the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. This is where I stand, and this is where the hill of faith that I'm willing to be crucified upside down in honor of the one true God and His only begotten Son, because He loved me by giving His only begotten Son. He is a God of love and understanding. And now I am free. And the Lord has set me free. May God lead you to the truth. May God lead you to find the truth. I found it. And so to my friends and families, come out of the Seventh-day Adventist Church apostasy. There are historic Seventh-day Adventist Christians, home fellowships, and communities independent ministries who are the true Seventh-day Adventists. Join them. Find them. They advocate non-Trinitarian teachings. They preach uh, uh, the, the message of LNG, the true and pure message of LNG. Most of them are in the countryside. Most of them practice dress reform. All of them practice the health reform and, and dress reform and embrace the country living. I hope I'm clear. I know I have been supported by many church members before, but the truth is more important 
than in favor of submitting. And so, whatever the consequences may be, the truth is the truth. I found it, and I'm sharing it to you. May God continue to bless you.